It is my joy and privilege to share God's word with you. Usually uh, in December, I like to speak a Christmas sermon. But I feel this year I'm not yet ready to preach a Christmas sermon. So we're not going to do a Christmas sermon today. I want to speak to you on the title, How to Be a Giant Slayer. How to defeat the giants that the enemy sends to your life and family. If you're new to the faith or if you're new to this thing, you say, what is a giant? Who is a giant, right? A giant can be a sickness. COVID-19 can be a giant. Finances can be a giant. Sometimes relationships can be a giant. But I believe God has called you and I not just to face the giants, but to defeat them and to overcome them in the name of Jesus. In 1 Samuel 17, there's a beautiful outline of what needs to happen if you're going to be a giant slayer. We're going to look at primarily the story of David and Goliath and understand that there were some very clear steps that he took that transformed him into being a giant slayer. And if you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17 And we'll start with verse 20. I'll read it for you. Join with me. So David rose early in the morning. I just feel I need to read that again for the young people. All right. So David rose early in the morning, left the sheep with the keeper, and took the things and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the camp as the army was going out to the fight and shouting for the battle. In some translations, it says the army was coming out of the trenches and they went shouting for the battle. Can I hear an amen this morning? Now, as we begin, I I want you to notice something very powerful here, that David was not just fighting for himself. Because if you read the story, Goliath says, if I win, that is, if Goliath wins, then David and his army would serve Goliath and his army. And if David win, the Philistines would serve them. See, this is what we need to understand when we face the giants, when, we, when we're facing the giants. It is not just about us. It's about our family. It's about our generations. It's about our future. Because notice, if David lost the battle, his family would become enslaved. His children would become enslaved. The next generation will be affected. So the future of David and all the people were dependent upon David defeating the Goliath. And that's what I think we need to understand about giants first. That your victory is not just for you. Your victory is for everyone around you. When David defeated Goliath, the army of Israel that was hiding. Okay, they were scared all this time. They were like, ah! All of a sudden, when David defeats Goliath, they become transformed. And they go, ah! I'm amazed that one man transformed an entire army. And in the same way, when you face a giant, when you overcome that giant, when you defeat that giant, you become a chain breaker. You become a deliverer. You become a transformer when you overcome that depression. Come on, somebody. When you overcome that addiction, when you overcome that temptation, other people around you can overcome because you have overcome. You made a way for them. Let me just get philosophical for a moment here. The external giant that David faced symbolized the internal giants you and I face. I doubt that any of you are going to go face to face with a nine foot giant unless you join the WWE or something. But it symbolizes the internal giants we face. And listen, the Bible says there was one giant. Then it says there was a family of giants. There was a land of giants. There's a valley of giants. One giant left alone will become an army of giants. What you tolerate will dominate. And that's why I feel today, as children of God, we need to look at that giant and say, Hey, giant, I am coming against you in the name of Jesus, and you're going to fall down. I want to give you qualities today of what you need to have in your life if you're going to be a giant killer. 
Number one, giant slayers come out of the trenches. Now, hopefully you know what a trench is. It's, it's like a ditch or something you dig to defend yourself. Especially when you're in a war, you dig that, you hide there, you peep to see the enemy and you keep going back. And the, the trench can also symbolize a low place. Are you with me so far? Now the Bible says that Goliath was nine feet tall. But it doesn't matter even if Goliath was nine feet tall because when you're down in the trenches and when you're looking up, Goliath seems like he's about 15 feet tall. And the enemy is very strategic with his appearances. He came when they are in the trenches. So when they looked up and they saw Goliath marching, he actually looked way bigger than he was. The enemy always shows up when, at, when you are at your lowest point in life. He never comes when you are high and full of faith. You know, he's strategic. He loves to get you done. And when you're at the trenches, he comes. And the enemy was big because they were down. And I feel I came here to preach to somebody and tell you this morning that if you will get up today, you will discover that the enemy is not as big as you thought he was. If you will get up today, you will discover that the devil is not as powerful as you thought he was. If you will get up today, you will discover that your problem, that your situation, that you thought was so big, is not as big as you thought it was. That the spirit that's coming against your marriage, coming against your children, coming against your finances, is not as powerful as it was because God has not called you to be in the trenches. He has called you to stand up and be a giant slayer. Come on, if you believe it, shout a good amen. See, at some point, I might have a bad day. At some point, bad things might happen. At some point, I might feel sorry for myself. And I might stay down. But that doesn't mean I always stay down. Oh, poor me. <laughs> God has forsaken me. I am a dust, Lord. You can be down, but you should not be down. At some point, you need to get up from your trenches. Look at the devil. Come against him in the name of Jesus. You know how you shrink the enemy? Some Christians are always looking up at the enemy and seeing a big devil. Let me tell you how you shrink the enemy. It's by pulling yourself up, praising the Lord, focusing on Jesus, declaring the word of God, praying in the Holy Spirit. Come on. Anybody here today ready to get up? Lift your hands. Wave it at me. Shout a good amen. Amen. If you say, no, pastor, I want to stay in the trenches. The trenches is what I like. Say a good amen. Wow. If you say, no, pastor, I know who I am. I am called to be an overcomer. I'm called to be a champion. Come on, give the Lord a good amen. 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 Now we're getting somewhere. You are not some weak, down pushover. You are a giant slayer. You're an overcomer. You're a conqueror. You're a history maker. You're a world shaker. It feels like it's slowly getting in, isn't it? So I'm, oh, wow. Thank you, Pastor. Let me, you know, I've, I've done this in, in the past, and I feel like I need to do it again just to get you in the zone, okay? I'm going to ask you a question, and I'm going to give you the answer as well. Guaranteed pass. COVID-19 bonus. The question I'm asking is, where are the world shakers? And the answer is, here I am. Are you ready? Are you ready? Where are the world shakers? The way you said, I'm not convinced. I'll give you one more chance. Okay, are you ready? One, two, three. Where are the world shakers? There we go. Tell somebody, you're an overcomer. You're a champion. Hallelujah. See, I'll tell you one more thing before moving to my next point. What you do when you're low and looking at your biggest enemy will determine whether you have defeat or 
victory. Number two, giant slayers, you're going to like this, are shouters. The Bible says something very significant and notice it says they got up out of the trenches and started shouting for the battle. If you're going to be a giant slayer, you cannot be silent. Giant slayers shout. What do they shout? Goliath was shouting defeat across the field. The enemy is always shouting lies across the field. But I feel as children of God, we need to shout the promises of God louder than the lies of the enemy. You shout the promises of God. You shout a shout of praise. Can I hear an amen? Giant slayers praise. Giant slayers say to themselves, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Can I hear an amen? Giant slayers lift a shout of praise. They, they pray aloud. They confess the word of God. They praise God. Come on, somebody. Can we give the Lord a good hand clap of praise today? David said, clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. All right? You know what the enemy wants you to do? He wants you to just sit there and take it and take it and take it and take it and take it. But I think it's time we look at that dirty old serpent and say, devil, not today. Can we say it today? Say, devil. Come on, say it like you mean it. Say, devil, not today. One more time, say, devil, not today. That's why we praise. Hallelujah. That's why you know the word of God. If faith is a pistol, then the word of God is a bullet. I like it. You can Instagram it. You can put my name. Don't put my name. Put your name. I like what Joshua said. He said, shout for the Lord has given you this city. Zechariah said, shout grace, shout grace, because God has already laid a foundation in your life for whatever the enemy is trying to bring against you. It's already inside of you. You just need to discover it. You don't sit there. You stand up. You declare the promises of God. You declare the praises of God. You say, enemy, I'm not going to sit back and take it. I know who I am. I've been called. I've been anointed. I'm coming against you with what I have. I'm tired of minimizing my praise. Anybody tired of minimizing their praise? You know? Anybody tired? You say, no, pastor, I'm happy where I am. Come on, anybody tired of minimizing their praise? Yes? If you're tired of minimizing your praise, say a good amen. So this is the next point for you. Lift your voice. Tell somebody, lift your voice. Talk back to the enemy. Don't let the enemy tell you lies. Talk back to him. Tell the promises of God back to the enemy. Giant slayers are shouters. Even if you're in a low place today, if you feel the enemy has come against you, he's taking your joy, he's taking your peace, he's taking your strength, and you feel tired, I want to tell you, stir yourself up, shake yourself up, begin to declare the promises of God. Hallelujah. Giant slayers don't go into the battle moping. They don't go into the battle weeping. They go into the battle shouting. Number three, giant slayers focus on the reward. Okay. Let's read verse 25, 1 Samuel 17. And it says, and the men of Israel said, have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. They're talking this with each other. And David comes and they repeat this to David. Okay? Can you say with me that's one time? Say one time. Come on one more time. Say one time. Because I'm going to show you something. Okay? See, giant slayers... Focus on the reward. What was the reward here? You get to marry the king's daughter. And I'm sure she was gorgeous. Okay? 
You get riches and then you get no taxes. When I preached this in Gurgaon, they were very excited about the third point. No taxes. Hallelujah. You are like, king's daughter, mm -mm. riches, no taxes. Woo! Okay. But listen here. Okay, That's in verse 25. Okay, now watch verse 26. Okay, So David spoke to the men who stood by him saying, What shall be done for the man who kills the Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him in this manner saying, So it shall be done for the man who kills him. Basically they're repeating what they just said. That's two times, right? Now watch, this gets even interesting. Verse 28. Now Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men. And Eliab's anger was aroused against David. And he said, why did you come down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? Do you see the language here? He's, he's condescending. Where's the few sheep? It's not even many sheep. Where's the few sheep you left in the wilderness? In other words, he's saying to David, hey, you're a nobody. You're not important. What are you doing here? You know, one thing I've learned, there will always be people who come and tell you why you don't belong in their level. They try to belittle you. Make you look insignificant. Why do you care about the battle? You're just a delivery boy. They said, who are you? Okay. And he says, I know your pride and insolence of your heart, for you've come down to see the battle. Now verse 29, and David said, what have I now done? Is there not a cause? And you're not going to believe this. Verse 30, he turned from him toward another and said the same thing. And these people answered him as the first ones did. Again, this is beautiful. His brother is condescending him. He ignores the voice of the critic, turns around and says, So, what's the reward? And they tell him, the reward. You get the king's daughter. Thank you. You get riches. And then you get no taxes. Isn't that amazing? And this is a big clue to a giant slayer because giant slayers focus on the reward more than the risk. Why does the Bible take three verses to repeat the same thing three times? Because when you go into a battle, the enemy wants you to fo focus on the wrong thing. Focus on the reward. Now if you can rewind with me a little bit to the 12 spies, right? Moses sends 12 spies, and he says, go spy the promised land. What did they focus on? They focused on the problem. What did they say? They said there are giants in the land, and we look like grasshoppers in their sight and in our sight. Okay? They didn't focus on the big fruits that took two people to carry. You would think that big... Whatever that fruit is. Pomegranate. Such a massive pomegranate would be something to focus on. But their eyes are not focusing on that. They're focusing on the problem. Okay? That's what the enemy wants us to do when we go into battle. He wants us to focus on the problem. And many times we say it's so hard. I'm not sure if I can do it. I'm not sure if I can stay in this marriage. I feel like giving up. I'm not sure if I can do this business. It's so hard. I'm not sure if I can be in this job. It's so hard. Don't focus on the problem. Focus on the reward. The Bible says Jesus, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He focused on the reward. I'm telling you today, it's worth fighting the enemy. It's worth fighting for our families. Can I hear an amen? It's worth fighting for our faith. It's worth standing up to hell when it comes against us. It's worth saying no to the devil. You can't have my family. You can't have my house. You can't have my finances. I think one day, you know, roads of gold, 
gates of pearl, living eternally with Jesus, one day it is going to be worth it for you and me. That's our prize. Get your eyes on the prize. Right now, it might be challenging. Even to come to church in the midst of this COVID-19 can be hard. But I want to tell you, it's worth the reward. It's worth it. It's hard sometimes. And you know, forgive me for, for doing this. But you know, I've realized that we, this COVID-19 is messing with our heads. When we started COVID-19, people are like, whoa, we can have digital service, amen. But then they said, oh, the service is on YouTube the whole day. I don't need to get up at 10 o'clock and watch it. I can sleep at night, 10 o'clock, I can watch it. Right? And then night, 10 o'clock became Monday morning. But it's worth coming to the house of the Lord. It's worth bringing your family to church. It's worth fighting for your faith. It's worth standing for your faith. It's worth that you came to church today morning. God's recording it in heaven. And one day you will receive a crown for standing for your faith. Come on, if you're going to clap, give a good hand clap to the Lord. It's worth the fight. Come on, it's worth the fight. Say it with me, it's worth the fight. It's worth sharing your faith. It's worth telling somebody about Jesus. I'm getting excited. Heaven's going to be worth the reward. There's something greater than going to heaven. And there is something greater than going to hell. You might ask me, what's greater than going to heaven? What can be greater than going to heaven? And what can be greater than going to hell? When you get to heaven, and when you turn back, and you see your family, it's worth it. It's greater. It's greater than just me going to heaven. Because of my faith, my entire family is in heaven. Come on, somebody. When I turn around and I see my beautiful wife and I see my daughter Deborah, I'm going to say, praise the Lord. It was worth every struggle. It was worth every challenge. My family is there with me in heaven. But if I go to hell and I turn around and my family is there because I did not stand for my faith. Because I didn't stand strong. That is worse than going to hell. That's why I want to preach to you today and say focus on the reward. Get your eyes on the prize. Whether it's a relationship, whether it's a job, whether it's your business, don't focus on the problem because the enemy wants you to focus on the problem, but you fix your eyes on the reward. And our greatest reward is Jesus. And our greatest reward is heaven. Can I hear an amen? amen. Are you with me this morning? Okay, number four, John killers see their giants as straining and not as trouble. They see their giants as training and not as problems. David didn't look back and mope about it. You know, he's telling Saul, I fought the lion, I fought the bear, but he didn't say it like, Oh, Saul, I fought the lion, I fought the bear. It was so hard. You don't know what challenges they went through. Did he say like that? What did he say? He said, I fought the lion. I fought the bear. It was training. I fought the lion. It was training. I fought the bear and it was training. We don't see our problems like problems, but we see them as training. Listen, you will never slay a giant complaining about every little lion that you had to fight. I like this point. That's a great point, Pastor John Prakasu. I've never seen a moping giant killer. I've never seen a joyless giant killer. See, when you say, God was with me when I fought the lion. God was with me when I fought the bear. God was with me when I had nothing. Why will I doubt him now? 
Okay. Maybe you're fighting a giant. I don't know. Maybe you're fighting a giant for your business. Maybe you're fighting a giant for your family or, or a relationship. But listen, when you face the bear and when you face the lion, you have a track record. Right? What's that track record? A track record of winning. And you look at this giant and you say, hey, Goliath, you might be the biggest giant that I've ever seen in my life. But I have a track record because I faced the bear and God was with me when I faced the bear. I faced the lion and God was with me when I faced the lion. And guess what? The same God who was with me when I faced the bear and the lion, he is with me today and I cannot lose a battle. I cannot lose because of who is with me. Can I hear a good amen? amen. Come on, can I hear a louder amen? amen? Give a good hand clap to the Lord. This is the belt of truth that we wrap around going into battle. I know who I am. Can I hear an amen? amen. All right, I have some more. I'm going to give you one more. Giant killers have to be themselves. All right? Verse 38. To Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a bronze helmet on his head. He clothed him with a coat of mail. David fastened his sword to his armor and tried to walk, for he had not tested them. And David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I have not tested them. So David took them off. In other words, David was saying, hey Saul, I'm a giant slayer, and I don't do borrowed armors. I've got my own weapon. Hallelujah. I have to be myself. I can't be you today. You can't be me. Praise the Lord. God didn't anoint me to be somebody I am not. Okay? David might have said, King Saul, my raggedy little looking sling might be nothing compared to your beautiful shining kingly sword but this sling is what God has given me and this sling has the anointing of God upon it and because this sling is what God gave me and his anointing is upon it this sling is powerful as a preacher I have to be me right Frank I cannot be Bishop T.D. Jakes I cannot be Pastor Stephen Furtick I have to be me. God anoints you to be you and not a fake you. I've got to be who God created me to be. Can I hear an amen? See, what the enemy does, he wants to make you feel insecure about what you have. Right? He comes and says, all you have is a sling. What you going to do with that sling? How are you going to beat that giant? All you got is a little sling. But you got to tell the devil, hey devil, all I might have is a sling. But this sling has the anointing of the Holy Ghost upon it. You know, can I share something with you? In the Bible, Paul had an apprentice named Apollos. You remember? And Apollos was an incredible preacher. In fact, many places, people preferred Apollos over Paul. When Paul's invitation came, the flyer came, Apostle Paul speaking, nobody showed up in church. And Ap Pastor Apollos, church was packed. People loved Apollos more than Paul's preaching. But you know what? God anointed Apollos to be Apollos. God anointed Paul to be Paul. And I'll tell you why. Tell me today, 2,000 years later, tell me one sermon Apollos preached. Tell me. Can you tell me one sermon Apollos preached? We don't know. But we can tell book after book after book after book that Paul wrote. Because God anointed Paul to be Paul. And because he was in his gift, and he's still a blessing to you and me. Come on, give the Lord a good hand clap. Amen. Don't underestimate what God has given you. Don't underestimate it. You are called to be a giant slayer. God created you. God designed you to be you. All right, let me give you one more point. Okay? Giant slayers are determined. Can you say with me? Determined. 
Come a little louder. Determined. Verse 40. It says, And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's back which he had, even in a script, and his sling was in his hand. And he drew near to the Philistine. All right, question. How many stones did David pick? Five. Why would you pick five stones when you're only facing one giant? Right? Why would you pick five stones? I think David had this mentality. He was determined. He said, if the first stone doesn't bring you Goliath, I've got one more stone for you. And if the second stone doesn't work, I've got one more stone for you. When I was young, when I was starting ministry, I preached a, a killer sermon on David and Goliath. And my grandmother was there. And after the sermon, she came to me. She said to me, grandson, that was a fantastic word. Can you tell me what those five stones represent? <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say I couldn't answer her that day. I said, grandma, they represent the name of Jesus. J-E-S-U-S. <laughs> Powerful. When you go in the name of Jesus, there's no power of hell that can stand against you. But today I have an explanation. I'm going to give you five stones today that you can use. Are you ready? Yeah. First stone, I think we call that stone prayer. When the giant comes against you, you take that stone of prayer. You get on your knees and you begin to pray. And if somehow that giant doesn't come off with praying, you've got another stone in your pocket. And that stone is fasting and praying. You fast and you pray and you come against that giant. And for some reason, if that giant still doesn't fall, it's okay. Why? Because you've got another stone. You've got praise and thanksgiving. Praise and worship. You get on your knees and you praise God and you give thanks and you begin to worship. And that giant will come down. And somehow, if that giant still doesn't come down, it's okay. I've got one more stone, and that is praying in the Holy Ghost. I've got some Holy Spirit-filled intercessors who know how to kick devil in the teeth. I'm going to ask them to pray with me, and we're going to see this giant come down. And if somehow that giant still doesn't come down, You've still got one more stone. And that stone is your tithes and your offerings. And you say, enemy, you can come against me. I'm not only going to pray. I'm not only going to fast. I'm not only going to speak in tongues. I'm not only going to worship. But I'm going to give like I've never given before. I'm going to give sacrificially. I'm going to keep putting these stones at you. Till you come down in the name of Jesus. I like those five points. I think number five was the most that David had missed. Right? That's why he took five stones. He said, if I don't get you with the first rock, I'm going to get you with the second and the third. I think you've got to have some backup stones. Come on, how many understand what I'm preaching? You need to have some backup stones. Tell somebody, have some backup. Have some backup stones. Some people say, well, pastor... I prayed, nothing happened, so I give up. Come on, have a backup stone. Did you pray? Did your giant not come down? What do you do? You take that second stone, fasting and prayer. Hallelujah. Come on, I only understand what I'm preaching today. We don't give up. We are determined people. We keep going till the enemy comes down in the name of Jesus. Are you determined today to slay the giants? How many people are determined this morning to slay the giants? If you're determined, shout a good hallelujah. hallelujah. The Bible says he went on the day of battle. First stone, only one stone he took. He threw it. It hit the giant's head. And the giant came tumbling down. Why? Because giant slayers are people who come out of trenches. Giant slayers are people of discipline. I didn't give you those points because when I asked your pastor yesterday, how long should I preach? You know what he told me? 21 minutes. 
It's a miracle he saved. Just kidding. So I had many points. I took them all out. But I'm not giving them to you now. It's too late. Okay. But giant slayers are disciplined. Okay. Giant slayers are people who come out of trenches. Giant slayers focus on the reward more than the problem. Can I hear an amen? All right. Can we see one more? All right. Lastly, giant slayers take authority over the enemy. Okay. And this is amazing. Okay. He takes that sling. He throws it at Goliath. Goliath comes tumbling down. What does, Goliath, what does David do? He takes Goliath's own sword and he cuts off his head. I just want to stop here and say, sometimes God can take the same weapon that was meant to destroy you and use that to promote you, to give you a victory. So David cuts off Goliath's head and he does something weird. He does something gross. What does he do? He takes that head back to his tent. Why? Why would you take a head to your tent? Okay. Now, of course, that head landed in Jerusalem. Don't worry. He didn't keep it in his tent all his life. Just for a moment, right? It's a public victory. David defeats Goliath. People are shouting. People are rejoicing. And, and you know, we saw this. Whoever wins this battle wins it for generations, right? And so David brings the head and he puts it on a spear in his tent. I think David understood this. He said the head represents authority. And I think David was saying, hey devil, I fought you out there in the battlefield. I fought you out there in the ministry. But sometimes there are demons, are devils in my own backyard. There are devils in my own home. And so De David's putting that head in that tent. And said, I fought you out there. But I'm going to fight you right now. Right here. Take authority in my home. And tell you. You cannot have my family. You cannot have my marriage. You cannot have my home. You cannot have my finances. You see this authority. That you and I talk about. It doesn't just work in church. It works in your home too. Come on, can I hear an amen? It's not just coming and church say, Shura bara Honda, bara Toyota. No. You can go to your home as well and use that same authority and look at the devil and say, Devil, get out in the name of Jesus. So David, he does something strange. He puts that head in the tent. And I think David was speaking to that head. And I think this is something we can do. We speak to that head today and we say, You can't have my marriage. You can't have my family. I have a covenant with God. And whatever devil you meant for evil, God will turn it around for good. You're not going to have my family, not my children, not my job, not my gifts, not my talents. I'm going to take authority, cast you out in the name of Jesus. I want to pray with you today. I hope you receive this today. Are you ready to slay some giants? Yes. Come on, are you ready to slay some giants? Yes. I don't know what giant you're facing today. But you're called to be a giant slayer. And God has already given you the grace that you need to defeat that giant. Hallelujah. Giant slayers don't quit. They don't give up. Tell somebody, don't quit. This is the, this is the difference between a scaredy cat and a giant slayer. Are you ready? A scaredy cat runs from the giant, but a giant slayer runs towards the giant. What did David do? He ran towards the giant. He ran towards the problem. Would you do that? No, we, we would run away. But giant slayers run towards the problem. Stand with me. Let me pray for you. You know... I want to just finish with two verses today. One of my favorite verses in the Bible is this. Daniel chapter 11 verse 32. Do you know what it says? I'll read it for you. Half of that verse. It says, but the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. Come on somebody. Say a good amen. 
says, but the people who know their God. Do you know your God today? Do you know your God today? If you know who your God is, you can do great exploits for him. Can I hear an amen? Second Chronicles chapter 16 verse 9. I love this scripture as well. And it says, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. I love that scripture. What it says is, I think even today, God's looking. God's searching. He's saying, who, who is loyal to me? And it says, God is seeing on behalf of who he can show his power, his strength, his might. Bethel City Cathedral. English service. Listen to me today. Even today, God is searching people on whose behalf he can show his strength to you. He's a strong God. He's a strong man. But he's seeing whose hearts are loyal. If you know him, if you are loyal to him, he will make you a giant slayer. Hallelujah. Do you believe it today? Do you believe it today? Tell somebody you are a giant slayer. I, you know, I'm, I'm not kidding. I think we need to get this in our spirits. Because too many times we think, Pastor, pray for me. Put your hand on my head. Shake me like a tomato. Pull on my hair out. Then I feel the anointing has come on me. God has called you to be a giant slayer. It's time you stand up. You look at that dirty old serpent and say, I know who I am. I'm anointed by God. I've got my slingshot. I've got my word of God. And I'm coming against you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands today. Begin to speak in tongues for just a moment. We'll end it right now. Come on, this is how we fight, church. If you don't have the gift of tongues, begin to praise God. Tell them, God, thank you for anointing me. Thank you for being with me. Today I feel God wants to impart in you a new strength, a new faith, a new anointing. That you know that you're not alone. That you can overcome every problem. You can overcome every circumstance. You can look at that giant. You are an overcomer church. You're an overcomer man of God. You're an overcomer woman of God. Stop living in defeat. Stop believing the lies of the enemy. It's time to shout back the promise. Promises of God. Come on, come on, come on. Begin to stir up today. Begin to stir up today. I don't think God brought you here today to take you back the same way you came. Come on, something divine is beginning to go, beginning to happen right now. Every fear. Every lie we come against you in the name of Jesus. Every deception, every weapon of the enemy, we take authority right now. We break your power in Jesus' name. Come on, come on, come on. Stir up, stir up, stir up. It's time for you to get up out of the trenches. It's time for you to lift yourself up, shake off that desk and say, yes, yes. It's worth it, church. It's worth it. 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 God has called you and me not just to warm up a chair, not just to attend a Sunday service, but to shake our world, to preach the coming of Jesus. Come on, to declare his goodness, to heal the sick, to proclaim the liberty of the Lord. Oh, mighty Savior, mighty Savior. 
give us a divine impartation. I feel, I feel even right now, God's lifting some people up. God's stirring some people up. God's shaking some things up right now. Come on, step in, step in, step in today. Receive the deliverance. Did you come with a heavy burden today? Did you come with a heavy burden today? God's breaking it off right now. You're an overcomer. You're a champion. Are you facing a situation you thought there's no way out? The devil's coming against your children, against your family, and you don't know what to do. Come on, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I don't know why, but I just feel challenged to tell you today. It's time we become giant slayers in the fact that we take this gospel to the world to our city to our workplace to our colleges wherever god has placed us come out of that trenches stand for your faith it's worth the risk it's worth it church shake off spirit of apathy today god Shake off spirit of mediocrity today, God. Shake it off today. I feel, I feel, I feel this. I'm going to end with this. But I feel some of you are saying, Pastor, that was great. But I'm not the David. I'm just the army. No, God has called you to be a David. God's called you to be a giant slayer. This word's for you. This is you. You stand up today. Father, we thank you this morning. For your presence in this place, God. We thank you for your word because your word is truth. And the truth shall set people free today. We pray, God, this word will go deep into people's hearts. That they will understand that they are called to be giant slayers. And we will look at the city of Quimbatur and look at every strong man. Look at every demonic spirit. Look at every devil and say, hey, in the name of Jesus, out of my city. Out of my family. Out of everything God has put in my care today. We thank you today, God. Anoint us today, God. Even if all we have is a sling, let the anointing of God come upon it today. Bless your children. We speak your favor. We speak your blessing. We speak your deliverance. Even today, let healings begin to happen. Let miracles begin to happen. Let your goodness come like a flood and overtake people's lives, Lord. We bless them today in Jesus' name. Everybody said. Amen. Come on. Give the Lord a good hand clap. God bless you. Have a great week. And we'll see you again next week.